What's going on guys? So today is one of those days where I'm doing the stuff that my viewers recommend that I do. And this is one thing people recommended after I showed these aluminum plates in a video and they're essentially a spacer made to fill the gap here at the top of the Anderson blocks. These are jack blocks from Anderson. And they sit flush in here allowing you to use your snap pads on top of these. And the folks at Anderson actually approved this setup. So when I first showed you these, I didn't know if they would, and then I sent the video to them and they came back really thrilled that I came up with this kind of innovative yet simple idea to allow them to be compatible with the actual snap pads. Now the problem is this is very slick and it can get very slick if it's wet. So a lot of people said, why don't you put traction paper or some type of a traction grip on top? So I got this black diamond grip tape. I got it in 12 by 10 feet, 12 inches by 10 feet. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Very, very, very sticky stuff. Um, it is essentially, I believe 80 grit on top and that ain't going anywhere. So now I could lower snap pads on these even if they're wet and have no fear that they're gonna eventually slide off if I get a strong enough side wind or some crazy wind storm that no one's ever seen before that can slide them off the top. So. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm simply cutting about a foot square out, throwing it on top, pressing it down and cutting it with a razor knife. Okay, so I only keep four of them actually in the RV. And the reason for that is I don't think I'm ever gonna come across a scenario where I'd need all six of them under every Pad. So the main purpose of this is if I'm at an extreme angle and I need extra space between the bottom of the foot and the ground, that's where these come in. So I've done four of them. I have two more that I might do later, but these are the four that I keep in the RV with me. They turned out really, really good and they actually make it a little easier. Well, I thought they'd make them easier to get out. Yeah. Yep. So turned out really good and it's going to give that extra traction to prevent snap pads from ever sliding off the top of them if they're slick. What do you think? Anyways, let's move on to the next viewer suggested change that I do to something. Okay, so a lot of people suggested after I kind of complained at how bright these lights were in here and that there was no dimmer on them, I do wish that they'd put a dimming switch at least on a few of them and make them less of this bright white color and more of like a soft white. Well, a lot of people said, well, why don't you throw some LED light strips around the top of the slides or some other areas, kind of like the Van Lee Beacon had. Well, the Beacon had those, but it was also wired for them. So they had wires already in place. Actually, everything was already pre-installed so the LED light strip could be controlled from your control panel. I didn't have those. And if I had to modify this, it would require essentially drilling holes in the corners of the slides. And that's not something I felt comfortable doing, especially because I would have to tap into a 12 volt source. So instead I purchased these LED light strips and these are RGB LED lights. So I have a remote control that I keep here in the center armrest. And it gives me the ability to change the color of the lights. I can change them to all sorts of different colors. I can even put it on this interesting like party mode where they will start just changing the different colors randomly. And the way I ran these is actually around the side, up the top and across the back portion of the valances. And this actually gives me the ability to conceal them. So it creates that ambiance that we're looking for while at the same time giving you a really cool glow effect. Now these plug into a 110 outlet and then it goes to a little controller which I mounted on the wall and then it plugs into the bottom of the light. So I started the light right here, went all the way around here this one, I actually put a splitter on the power connection behind the theater seating because these have massage heat and all that, and there's a power outlet back there. And I simply ran it back there, and then I ran the light all the way around the edge across the top and to the other side. Now I'm gonna stand back here and give you guys a little bit of a wider perspective of what this looks like. And again, I have the ability to change to essentially whatever color I want, as well as brighten or dim them down significantly if I want to as well. So again, pretty cool. This was a very, very inexpensive upgrade. I think I probably paid about maybe $40 for both sets and it took me all of 30 minutes to install. And because they're primarily ran across the top and they're 
of course, laying down with the adhesion. Plus, this specific brand was very, very, very positively reviewed in terms of the adhesive holding on real well. Um, it shows up a little bit differently in the camera. You can see each individual LED light in the camera. In real life, it's more of like a consistent thing, something cameras do. Kind of like this side shows up a little bit better. But the cool thing about this was it was so easy to install. It added a level of ambiance and it really, I think, dressed up the interior. Gives us the ability to be very, very custom in terms of what we want the interior to look like at night. Now, another thing I went ahead and added, so there are 110 outlets on both sides of the sofa and I added these really cool outlets. So this gives me six outlets, two on each side and two in the center, plus two USB ports and I can adjust the brightness of these and it's an off white color, kind of like a soft white glow. Because again, the lights in here are super, super bright. I'll show you. I mean, they're just extremely bright. You don't get any of that relaxing lighting like we actually had in the Chaparral. The Chaparral had really, really nice lighting. It had sconces on each side, which I miss. I wish we had sconces on each side. So to make up for that, I simply put these little lights in and I have three different brightness levels and they look really good. What do you guys think? This one's off because it has a light detection. So once the lights turn off, you can actually see it. And it has a little touch button on the top. It's touch sensitive. That gives you the ability to turn them on and off and change the brightness. Very cool, huh? And this was a pretty inexpensive upgrade. I think they were $15, maybe $20 each. Now they make another version of those in white, which I put in the bedroom that have the same light, but for some reason you can get two of them for the price of one of these. But I wanted them to be black to kind of match the switches and everything else in here. What do you think about those? Anyways, let's move on to the next little upgrade that was suggested by you guys. Okay, so finally we are here in the bathroom and you guys saw in a previous video where I put this cool stick on kind of tile on the back of the wall here as kind of a backsplash. It looks absolutely great. And a lot of people said, leave it at this height. Don't run it all the way up the sides of the mirror like I had kind of thought about doing, but continue it this way. So put it on this section of wall. What do you guys think? Does it look more complete this way? What's your opinion of it? And a lot of people also said that they've purchased tiles similar to this, and after a couple of years and the heat and humidity, they start to peel off. I read reviews on probably 30 or 40 different brands of this type of stick-on tile, and I did not purchase the ones that had negative reviews in terms of, you know, after a few years, they started to peel off. This specific one that I put in the link of my video had really solid reviews and people actually said they stuck so well that when it eventually came off or if they peeled it off, it took the backing with it. So I can attest to the fact that once I stuck it on here, even if it just barely touched, it really, really held on well. And I did clean the wall really well. And not only did I clean it well, I cleaned it the day before I came out and did this. I actually did this today. I came out yesterday and I cleaned it with alcohol and I let it dry overnight. So the alcohol wasn't wet or possibly saturating any of this, preventing it from sticking. So yeah, I came out yesterday, I cleaned up the area, same thing I did for the other sections, threw it on there today, and I think it looks really good. Again, what's your opinion? Should I continue it up the side here? I think it would be way too much if I continued it right here. So now that I have this section, it makes me feel a little bit more confident about not doing the rest of this. And I think most people didn't want me to anyways, but what do you guys think of that? I think it turned out really good. And then finally, on the way out here, somehow I completely forgot to pick up the switch that arrived. Basically, Coachman was sending me one of these switches so I could put it right here and I could take out this switch. If you guys didn't watch the video I did, this switch I placed here because when they wired the front outside porch light, they wired it into constant power because it's a motion detection light. Well, the problem is, is it's a three mode motion detection light where you can switch it between always on, always off, or motion detection. And it requires an on off toggle switch to do it. So they thought they were setting it up in a better, more convenient way when in fact they were unintentionally setting it up the wrong way. So I put a temporary switch here, which works. It's basically just wired in line to the power going to that light, but they sent me one of these switches so I can make it look nice and flush and custom and match that specific spot where it actually says entry lights. But yeah, that'll be on my next to-do list. Um, we've really enjoyed this RV. We had the one major issue with plumbing, which is actually being addressed this week. So 
We're gonna have somebody come out and replace the gray tank valve under the RV. Coachman's taking care of that. Um, we don't really know what happened. It was probably a component failure where the actual arm itself somehow got dislodged or disconnected from the valve and it failed. So it's just not working. It could be something super simple. Whenever the technician comes out here, I'll film it so you guys can see specifically what happened just in the event something like this happens to you. But overall, we've had a really good experience with the RV. There's been a few minor little things. Probably the number one fit and finish issue we've had has been with the valances. These are a newer style valance that they just went to for 2020, 2021 in that time frame. They come down really far. Um, I've seen a lot of RVs where they just don't put a valance coming down right here. And there's kind of good reasoning for that because they can make contact with anything here. And because these are simply screwed into your wall fish aboard you could run into some issues with them breaking loose like we have but it's an easy fix i might try to figure out what a permanent fix is perhaps even kind of taking them off right here i really like the way they look they give you kind of this completed look when your day night roller shades are down but what are your thoughts should i just take them off should I find a new way to fasten them on there? I mean, you always take the risk that this chair could be tucked in right here and then you push it out and it hits the valance and breaks it off. You recline the chair, the sofa isn't attached to the floor, it's just sitting on the floor. Sofa and love seats, that's how they are in RVs. And if it gets moved back too far, it could hit it. What do you guys think I should do about these little side stills coming down off of the valances? Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and I hope you enjoy some of the things we've been doing to the RV. If anything, I hope it's inspired you to go out and do some of this stuff to your own RV, if you like it, of course. Guys, we'll talk to you again very soon.